Virginia Beach Development Authority, and I'm going to read a statement. Um, on May the 8th, our Chairman Dot Wood uh, sent us an email or a letter stating the following. <clears throat> on March 12, 2020, Gov Governor Northam declared a state of emergency due to COVID-19. Because of the catastrophic nature of the declared emergency, the City of Virginia Beach Development Authority has been unable to meet since that time. Pursuant to the bylaws of the authority dated December 18th, 2018, I hereby call a special meeting of the authority for Tuesday, May 12th, 2020 at 8.30 a.m. in the authority's boardroom at 4525 Main Street, Suite 700, Virginia Beach, Virginia. The attached agenda sets forth the business of the authority to be considered at the special meeting. To adhere to applicable safety regulations during the ongoing pandemic, only commissioners and essential staff will be in physical attendance at the meeting. This special meeting will be broadcast on cable TV and uh, bbgov.com. Citizens are encouraged to submit their comments to the authority prior to the special meeting via email at vkelly at vbgov.com. In addition to online registration, any member of the public who wishes to make comments during the special meeting must also register with Vicki Kelly by calling 757 356449 or contacting her via email at vkelly at vbgov prior to 2 p.m. on May 11, 2020. Sincerely, Dorothy Elwood, Chair. Uh, with that, this would normally be our public comment period. And as indicated in the letter from the chair, uh, the public was notified that they could either email their comments or call uh, in their comments. And according to uh, Taylor, we've received no, no interest or no comments from the public. That, that is correct. But in the event that a, mo a member of the public should want to come in person and join the meeting, we are live streaming in the smaller conference room next door so that we can assure that we maintain social distancing. Also, I think we need to disclose that we have two members of the authority that are that are with us electronically, though they, though they won't be won't be, be won't be voting in the event that, uh, Madam Vice Chair, you want to uh, recognize them for comments. They can certainly participate in the discussion, and uh, we have uh, our Chair Dot Wood and our authority member Neck and Shiaz are on the line. Thank you. Good morning to them as well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so for the regular meeting, we normally approve minutes uh, from the meeting held on February 18th. I guess I'll entertain a motion. We do have minutes from that meeting. Yes. I'll entertain a motion. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Aye. Okay. Two more. Uh, March 2020 and April 2020. 20 meetings were canceled, so we have no minutes from that, and we will next review our financial position. Thank you. So, uh, again, to, to minimize the number of staff members in the room, if you all allow, I'll, I'll run the presentations from here today and, and get up as needed. But uh, uh, I won't read all of these to you, but you'll see our beginning cash was a uh, Four point, just more than four point seven million. We had some activity. Uh, see receipts and disbursements. Not, not a lot of activity there. But ending cash is not fundamentally unchanged at uh, four point seven one three. Uh, in our in our incentive account, uh, uh, you'll see uh, a little interest income. Made a few disbursements, but a beginning cash of just over five million. Ending cash of four point six. Um, I do want to show you this today as this will be an important, this will provide important context for our conversation that is to follow a bit down your agenda on EDIP Part E. Uh, our uh, basically, we're called ending available funding or just call it our reconciled cash within our incentive program, uh, just over $2.5 uh, million. Like I say, the, uh, uh, the, uh, your uh, opportunity to, you, to discuss party will certainly affect this balance, but 2.5 uncommitted at present. When's the end of the fiscal year? Uh, June 30th? June 30th, yes, sir. And so, uh, great question. Uh, we anticipate another 2.2 to 2.3 million will arrive on July 1, uh, you know, as part of our allocation to the cigarette tax, which 
as revenues go, that one looks to be fairly stable. Um, with regard to that balance, I, I, of course, you're saying that Part E potentially could reduce that balance. Um, the incoming funds for Part E, are they reflected in here? They are not, only because that vote has not occurred yet. So, okay, so, the, so receipt and disbursement of Part E are here. That, that is correct. Okay, so that's an important. Point. Yes, that's right. So, so right now, the one and a half million that we have that is potentially in play for Part E is included in that two point five. The additional one million that City Council will discuss tonight is not included in there. And so, uh, I did not include the additional million because it's not yet been voted on. It's not yet been approved by the body. Uh, but uh, but in the event that that moves forward, uh, we. You, there would be that would, those would be additional funds. So the 1.5 is is part of the 2.5. Yes, sir. It's already in our account. And That's what I was trying to clarify. Yeah, so correct. that yes, is sir. there, but the disbursement potentially is not there yet. That is correct. The other million's outside of here. So That's right. So basically, if you move forward with the one and a half million for EDIP party, you will have a one million dollar balance to get. Right. Thank right. you. Um, Something else to note that's interesting, and I don't want to stake ourselves to this yet, but we think there may be a provision of the CARES Act that would allow us to recover some of this $1.5 million. As, as things are uh, uh, as sort of the, the picture around what state and local government uh, may have access to is starting to, to come together, we think that there's an opportunity to pursue some, uh, some recovery of the monies that we would allocate for EDIP Part E, but I do not think it's important to, discuss, to, to count on that at this point in the conversation. Right now, the 1.5 is part of our that is correct. fiscal year budget was part of the EDIP program. And council has just allowed us to create this new program. That's right. In order to help these businesses out. Hopefully, we'll get another million dollars added tonight. to that pot tonight. Because there's definitely a need for it. Any questions about the financial statements? Thank you, Taylor. Um, revenue bonds. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for bearing with me while I work through our that's technology. Pretty, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm impressed you got there. Um, so, uh, so with this, I'm not going to read you all of these. This is this is basically um, uh, this is this is at the request of City Council. Uh, uh, in their last voting me meeting, City Council approved the issuance of, uh, of just I think it's just less than 240 million dollars worth of uh, public facility revenue bonds. As as you all know, we are the conduit issuer for that debt. I should also uh, mention that Alice Kelly, the city's finance director, is with us. She's just in the hallway again so that we can maintain our numbers. But I'll, Taylor, uh, can I get you to hold for a minute? NECA, did you have a question about the financials? No, I did not. Thank you. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah. And so, uh, so uh, uh, just, uh, you'll see some notes here on the status of the municipal bond market. Um, as uh, uh, it's uh, no, no secret that the uh, <laughs> so many years ago, um, could you all? There, there seems to be some feedback. Could you all push the mute button? Actually, Taylor talking. Yeah. Kind of lag on the technology. Yeah. So somebody's watching it while we're talking about. Oh, okay. It. Put mute. Can somebody press mute on their feed? Again, so that we can answer NECA. Dot NECA. We're getting a delayed feedback of the presentation here that's coming through loud. So can can somebody can you press mute on your feed to us and then just unmute when you're piping in? Well, friend, I'm on a telephone. Oh, you want me to tell mute, mute your phone? Yeah. Mute it. Okay. Mute, mute, mute. Then I won't be able to hear you, right? No, we won't be able to hear the background of the delayed feed. You'll be able to hear us. Could be thought. Okay. That's All right. better. Yeah. So, um, we've had a uh, uh, we've had a series of, of calls with the city's uh, with Prague, the city's fi um, financial advisor, over the past few weeks. Certainly, if you look at the municipal uh, 
municipal, de municipal debt market. Um, March, uh, the month of March was terrible through, the, I mean, through the entire market, uh, really destabilized the market. That appears to be an outlier at this point. Obviously, we're only 60 days, I'm hesitant to say outlier, only 60, 60 days, not even 60 full days from the event yet. So 60 days in the world of financial markets is just, particularly bond markets, is just a matter. So it's hard to say that, that March is, is an outlier, but what we can say is the market seems to be, there's a, uh, and the data that some, some bond sales that have happened in April and now coming into May are suggesting that the market's trying to return to normal, although not there yet. That said, uh, uh, city's finance team believes it's, uh, we need to be ready to move on this bond issue uh, uh, when, uh, you know, basically, uh, so that when, when conditions are right, so that when it's time to go, we, we can. That's not that we're trying to time the market by any means, it's just being ready to go. Um, I won't read you with all of these points on the municipal market, but uh, all of these were shared with city council, so I'm happy to circulate this to anyone that wants to read it. But I do want to get down to the last couple of slides here, and I think this is important for the public to see. This is the schedule of activities that, uh, that this debt is proposed to fund. And so uh, when city, uh, there was, there's any time these conduit issuances happen, people, uh, the council item reads as though uh, basically because the authority has to issue it, there's all, there seems to always, always be confusion in the public that, that the city is giving this money to the, to the development authority. You will see here that that is clearly not the case. This money is being used for city buildings, like the replacement of City Hall, um, or there is economic and tourism development, but you'll see that's the Virginia Beach Sports Center, which is mostly complete at this point and scheduled to open this fall, the 19th Street Infrastructure Improvements, Central Beach Convention um, District uh, Parking, and uh, Virginia Beach Bioinfrastructure at the much smaller uh, number of 1.3 million. This is the road in our new innovation park. As you come down, and as this road, were it not for COVID, it was scheduled to open on April 30th. We're dealing, we're, we're on about a 45 day, uh, day delay there right now. And then you can see roadways as well. So um, that would be the, that's the proposed city portion of the funding. The, re, the remainder is for schools. Um, Princess Anne Middle School, John B. Dye, um, Thoroughgood Elementary. And so just to note, um, this is not where where we serve as the conduit issuer, issuer for this debt, the authority is not receiving this money and spending it on, on our activities. This is money that's being used to basically, uh, at least half of it, I see Alice is in the doorway. Alice, at least half of this money is being used to restore cash that's already been spent, right? Yes. And the other half is to fund construction that's been planned for at least you know, five or six years at this point, based on how we schedule our schedule. Underway, if they had, well, the city hall building is underway. Right. And so it's half of, half of it's been done and half of it's been constructed, but the project's on the underway. What is the uh, revenue drop we've had over the last two months because of the uh, lockdown? Um, I would need David Bradley to speak to that specifically. But Alice, I believe they're, they're projecting uh, on a revenue drop in the last quarter of, the, of this fiscal year uh, was 65 the, million. Between 25 and 30, is that right? Oh. I'm sorry. How much, how much revenue are we revenue said. loss have we projected for this year? Yeah, in the last three months of the fiscal year. That's sixty million. Sixty, excuse me. What percent is it, sir? What percent? Uh, sixty million would be of, of give or take a two billion dollar budget. Yeah, it's mostly trustee taxes, hotel and meal taxes, some sales tax. Um, the percentage. Of the total budget is a small well, yeah. of the, those particular um, revenue sources. It's almost 60%. And also, it's important to note as you're talking about trustee taxes, right. a considerable portion of your trustee taxes are allocated to dedicated funds like the tip and tap, correct? correct. And so, which you'll see, so the general fund impact is actually much lower than the, uh, than the total impact on the budget. General, um, Alice, you may want to speak we're, to that. We're estimating about a three and a half to $3.7 million hit on our general fund this year. Um, we've done a lot of uh, expenditure reductions to offset those revenues. We have a lot of attrition savings. We have some vacancy savings, obviously. And we've been um, very um, strategic in 
um, looking at what requisitions we're entering and making sure that we're not buying anything that's non-essential. And actually, I physically do that every night <laughs> to make sure all those requisitions are essential. So all oh, the $65 million shortfall, we're only going to be short $3.5 million? That's excellent. That's this fiscal year. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Right. And, and it's, it's important to note, and I think, I think our, uh, our, our acting city manager, uh, Tom Lee, he also, uh, our deputy city manager, managers, and Alice for, uh, for her leadership, in, in basically guiding the entire organization through a series of fairly drastic um, cuts in spending to ensure that we can close those gaps. And so, thank you, Alice. And so what are we here? This, I guess, fourth phase of the CARES Act potentially is uh, reimbursement to state and local governments. Is that what you're expecting or are you hearing? So, so I will tell you, I, I don't think we know. Andy Friedman has jumped into that space on the housing side um, and I think already been able to, uh, to, su to secure some support. Um, obviously, we're going to look at what's available for, uh, for EDIP Part E, but the big thing is we're, uh, I think the, the conversation is to see, I think it's safe to say at this point, without having a crystal ball, that, that some funding is coming to the Commonwealth. The question will be, how is that, is that allocate, allocated by population, is it allocated by need? And I don't think that we know the answer to that yet. What I can say that's strong for us is, we're the largest city in the Commonwealth, so if it's allocated by population, that's good for us. Also, one of the pillars of our local economy is tourism and hospitality. And so if it's allocated based on need, we're also in a strong position. It's just hard for us to comment on this, at this point, on specifically what that dollar amount could be. And then NECA has a question on the phone. NECA? Yes, hi. Um, so how much um, of our revenue impact of the loss was due to the stay-at-home order? Do we have a figure? NECA, can I have that question one more time? Sorry. Sure. And I apologize if I'm fading out. Do we know uh, how much financially we were impacted by the stay-at-home order? So, um, we're going to show you some data on that when we get to EDIP Part E. Um, as it relates to the, uh, I'll answer that two ways if I can. As it relates to the city budget, certainly we incurred some cost in having to beef up uh, technology and um, IT infrastructure to ensure that we could, that basically we could convert our workforce to a uh, sort of remote environment. Um, as it relates to the overall economy, well, we've got some, uh, some data to show in a moment. Um, hospitality and uh, high street retail have been heavily impacted um, and uh, to the to the tune we can say at this point just less than 25,000 furloughs in a six-week period uh, and we and we've got some harder economic data from the uh, from the Commonwealth that we'll show you when we get to EDIP Part E if uh, if, uh, if if we can wait that long. I can't thank you. So does that answer your question? Were you asking about the impact to the city's overall budget, or were you talking about impact to the region? Impact to the city. Okay. We can, uh, Peter Wallace, our, uh, um, our IT director, uh, has, some, has some data on that. We're happy to circulate. We'll get those numbers and circulate them to the authority members. Thank you. Any other questions? So at this point, Taylor, you need us to entertain a, um, a motion to approve the issuance of the public facility revenue bonds? That is correct. That's correct. Chair will entertain a motion. Move. Back up. All right, we have a first and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank you. Um, the next item is a request for approval of the use of the town center parking for the New Hampton Inn by Hilton. Taylor. Okay. I'm excited about this one because, best we can tell, this project is still moving forward. Uh, and so any, any time we've got, I mean, coming, coming out of a... Uh, the situation that we're in any time that we've got a, uh, a project moving forward, we're calling it a good project. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you all read through those disclosures before I dive into the presentation. Great. Um, so we're looking, 
project that we're working on is construction of a 14-story, 120-room hotel on Columbus Street here in Town Center. A series of amenities there. Uh, we're anticipating a Hampton Inn flag, uh, and uh, um, you know, at, at 14 stories, we think it's a nice addition to the town center skyline. Uh, it's 14 stories because it is. Oh, jump too far, excuse me. It's 14 stories because it is on a very small piece of real estate. You'll rem we're looking. This is our target parcel. You'll remember. So this is this is what we used to call the Dick's Garage. Now it's just the on the street garage, but the garage, um, and then here's the little uh, the the lake with the uh, with the trail around it, and so it's this very small corner here that they would be that they would be using to build the uh, the hotel. Here's the look from here's a look from the other direction. This is a rendering of what the hotel looks like on that site. It backs up to the substation, right? What's that? Is the substation right? That's right. There. How does that impact parking? Um, so, I'll show you. We, uh, we, we did a complete, you all will remember, um, around the construction of Block 9, which uh, recently completed with Zyder's American Dream Theater. First block that we'd added to the district without, without parking. So, uh, your direction to us then was do the construction, then rerun a parking study to see what your impact was. We reran the parking study. We found out that get, we're at give or take 50% occupancy in the district, and that was when that was when Dix was open, and so uh, uh, we have more than enough capacity. Uh, uh, the Dix garage, what we used to call the Dix garage, is uh, is traditionally the uh, uh, at that point was the uh, was the garage with the most capacity in it. We ran. Um, um, I won't bog, bog us down with the models, but uh, our parking study, when we were updating, we had them run it considering this uh, maximum occupancy during four times of year, so that we can see four different traffic patterns here in town center. And in every scenario, there was uh, there was more than enough capacity to uh, to carry the load for the, these hundred basically 120 rooms. We're not dedicating any parking. This is just use of the system. So. In the event that the garage closest to this structure is full, they understand that their, uh, uh, I guess, uh, customers will have to just will have to drive to another garage and find a spot. But, um, but we think this works, and so also um, we also presented this to city council, and here is and just to make this work, here's there are a few things that we asked for. Um, the original plan. The developer's original request was to come off of Columbus Street and just sort of have a sort of motor court right there on the street. That did not work for us because, as you know, Columbus is primary artery into town center. We just didn't think that was a safe traffic pattern. We asked and they agreed for them to make a turn off of Columbus to do their uh, to basically uh, discharge bags, motor court here, and then around the side and out. To do that, there were a series of easements. Um, a utility line that had to be moved, and also as part of that, this corner is very important, we think, from visually, and so we asked and the developer agreed that they activate this corner. There'll be a little outdoor cafe there um, with, some, uh, uh, with some landscaping that we think will be quite attractive um, as the property comes online. So uh, I will say the developer has been, uh, has been, uh, has been agreeable to everything we've put forward. The, the, thing that, the thing that they need is obviously access to the park. And so, uh, city council has uh, has approved that action, and so it's with with that approval, it's uh, uh, with with city council's approval. This is now ripe for your consideration because we know that we can deliver this project so long as we're we're agreeable to them using your parking. So that is so that is the request here today. Yes. Um, Sorry, Taylor. We've not got disconnected, so we're okay. just trying to get her back. I think I may have disconnected. Uh, so, so there's no fees, no there's no charge. So I, I your call cannot be completed. It's dialed. I think it's great, and um, the cost to build a building like that 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 on a small footprint is very expensive, and I just want. To be aware in the future that we need to start doing this at the oceanfront and the reason is, is because it is nearly impossible unless you have some 
huge funding source um, to build a hotel without parking. And I think the only way that we're going to change the aging hotels at the oceanfront is to create system programs like this that is mixed use between the employee, the beach parking, and the hotels. And that, instead of getting into incentives that are, cannot be um, that can be subjective, if it's a baseline incentive of parking, is how we're, that's really the only way we're going to get social front. So, so, couldn't agree more. I mean, basically, would you, when we talked to city council about this, what we talked about is this is, um, what we're seeing real time is our commitment to adding parking mature, I mean, coming into maturity and bringing the additional development that we told the public we would get. So, so yes, we've spent a lot of money, about $120 million on parking here in town center over about 20 years. But now we're at a point where that, that parking, where town center's full, and that parking is utilized at about 50%, and that, that available parking is now bringing us projects that we weren't seeing otherwise. And so, so we think this is, I mean, this, we couldn't agree more, we're making the case for a parking system here and uh, and uh, and it's it's a great and and coming coming back to Mr. Burns' question, which was what what's the grant amount? Uh, no request for grant. Hello. So that so that's that was the. Uh, and what is the hotel? Is it twenty five million or what, what are they spending? I'll show you that on the next slide, but it's, it's we're looking in that range, yes sir. The one the one thing to remember: the property will be subject to the SSD. That's right. So they'll be paying the extra forty seven. So. So that's a great point, Alex. Thank you. So this parcel at present is excluded from the town center SSD. Another one of our conditions was that they agree to become part of the SSD because we're now, again, we've got streetscapes to manage now. Um, they're, they're consistent with the rest of the district and the, and the developer agreed with that as well. So, so uh, here's what's great. There's no EDIP that's contemplated as part of this development. Um, our, own, our only request at this point is, uh, is use of parking. So we're, I mean, this, we're excited. Yeah. Um, I'm wrong. Taylor, what, um, with this hotel, what is the um, parking capacity that would be left? Uh, so we so we had, give or take, 2,200 available spaces on average. This is going to take 100, you know. Um, and so if you get into the Christmas season, so if you, if excuse me, holiday season, and um, Which you know, it's a Saturday night during the holiday season, then, uh, I mean, which is a single night event. I mean, so I think we approach, I think our highest density, and I don't have, I don't have that data in front, but it was like 67% was, uh, was max usage on the system, even during, during that time of year. Uh, and so we, we think there's, all of our models suggested there was ample capacity. And do we have any idea who's going to backfill Dix? Um, I don't. I need to check and see if we formally announce that. Okay. But, but there is back. somebody lined up, so that... Yes. Okay. We believe that's right. Yeah. Um, again, important to know, though, so no secret, uh, We right now we are assuming everything is charging forward. It won't be... We won't really know what our, um, what our hospitality and retail project load looks like until we're out of this crisis. I mean, I, I mean that's just an important thing to know. That's just to settle, yeah. That's right. Um, but, uh, but, uh, Mr. Sandy, to answer your question, um, we're looking at, uh, they're saying they can build it for 19 million, which for 120 rooms is, that's a lot. Um, what's great is we, we've, we've isolated the revenues and we can show that, uh, over 25 years, $30 million contribution in taxes based on projections of increasing real estate value along with, um, 2.7, almost 2.8 million to the SSD and, uh, just, just less than 6.2 to the town center tip. So we think this is a great project. And again, all they're asking us for is to share our parking. That's right. That's right. And it's, it's a good it, deal. It, and it does. And what it does is it takes one of the last, it takes this parcel. Basically, it makes development of this parcel a known thing uh, that fits within the district. So we're excited about that as well. Um, again, you can see this is just more information on what we showed at City Council. Um, and so we would we would request uh, your approval to allow this developer to use, uh, use our parking. I'll move it. All right, we've got a first and a second. Uh, I, any abstentions from this item? 
Taylor is going to abstain. Nope. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next item is Innovation Park. Taylor. Yeah. Okay. You all have seen this one before, but we'll show you the uh, disclosures one more time, give you a chance to read those as soon as there we go. So this is, um, you all will remember, and what we have here, this is a request to amend an item you've already approved. So um, you all, we originally saw this as six acre parcel located within the Innovation Park, kicking off construction there. We thought at that point that we were looking at a 45,000 square foot office um, ten with, with the activities uh, you know, that you see following below. We changed. Um, when we, uh, our initial offer was in the neighborhood of 300,000 an acre, um, which is consistent with, with what, um, property being sold for retail uses in the area was, um, had been generating. Uh, however, this is the first property that was appraised for industrial uses under the I-1 zoning that we pursued, or, um, pursued for the park. Came in at a much lower number. Um, but what helped is we caught a bit of a break because in the meantime, the developer's program was changing. And so from a program needing 14 and a half or six acres for 45,000 square feet, we saw his need grow to 14 acres with 135,000 square feet of proposed construction now. Um, still 10,000 square feet for, uh, for his use, but uh, he's been able to, uh, to basically uh, determine that, there's, that there is demand for an additional 125,000 square feet at minimum of use. And so um, we, uh, uh, we used that to basically say we, we had an offer that you all had approved for the six acres. We did the math and we said, okay, and he just said, so for that same amount of money, you know, how many acres can I buy on the appraised value because I now need it. And that's what we've done here. We've amended this to be, so 14.4, that is, that's what that offer spread out to. Um, it actually works out nicely because that is 14 and a half is the minimum amount of acreage that will deliver this, deliver this function with parking and the parking, uh, the parking intensity that some of his medical office users will be asking for. This is, um, this parcel is not to scale. Um, that's so you'll see six acres there. That six acres uh, really is closer to uh, to eight. But basically, to get to fourteen and a half, we're just going to bring this down, and he'll take the corner as well. Is that green area also part of the park, or is it just the blue? Yes, sir. This is a so. Uh, this is phase one of our park. This is this is what's under construction today. Um, this is the road that we're building at present. Uh, so this road <coughs> is scheduled to terminate here, and then this is the BMP that we're building to carry this first sort of 58 acres of the park. Um, we uh, this deal uh, is exciting enough to us. We think it probably advances our need to go ahead and work on the next phase of the road, which would get us here and add this BMP. Um, also, we're starting to see, given the wetland impact here, we may want to look at the southern end of the park as well, because there's some smaller parcels there that, uh, that work for development. We'll talk to you about that in a little bit. So the green area is not developable? It's not developed yet. We've got, so there's heavy wetland impact here on, uh, on Princess Anne Road that's got to be dealt with. But that uh, can be mitigated or not? We think so. The reason I'm asking is it looks like you're giving them the whole, the best acreage in the park there with the frontage, but I guess if you can develop the rest of that, there's other acreage on, on the main road. So so we believe that this can be mitigated. It will require time, though. I looked um, at a large parcel. What's that? Uh, Wetland's a lot of, lot of space. It's a lot of land right there. I bet that's 50 acres. If we can yeah, use and, it. And, uh, um, can't use it. So if, if you would, let me, uh, 
let me jump down the the agenda a little. Let me hold this conversation to we're down the agenda a little bit because I think we can share some things with you that will uh, that will answer some of these questions. But but as it relates to this, it's uh, again, it's a hundred thirty five thousand square foot office expansion in, in our community that is still moving forward. Talked to the developer as recently as yesterday, and so we um, we think this is a I think this is a great use. Uh, we do we do anticipate that there will be a medical office component to it. Here's a um, Here's a potential rendering about um, regarding what the first building would look like. Um, and these are just, again, more of that. Um, Which portion will be visible from the road? So he'll have, um, let me go back to that slide. He'll have, he'll likely have two buildings on the frontage. Um, and we have impressed upon him the need to have a facade on both sides of that, obviously. But so we think that, uh, that there are five buildings working around centralized parking. And so we think that there, and again, I'm not his engineer and don't want to pretend to be, but, but on some conceptual stuff that we have seen, we anticipate that, we, that we're probably looking at five buildings and that we'll see two on the front edge, one in the bend here, and then on, on the edge of the property um, next to this easement. So, uh, with sharing a parking field in between, um, we think we think that's the most efficient way to develop it. But that's really between him and his development team to uh, to come to. Uh, but we've seen a schematic that suggests that, that that's what we're likely to get. And they know whatever spacing Princess Anne has to. Absolutely. Is all of the green also zoned I one, or is it just the blue? Yes. So everything in the park is zoned I one, which is important because it's. We have so little industrially zoned real estate that if we're gonna if we're doing projects like this, I mean this is almost the only place we have for them to go. Particularly when you think about the way that uh, digital infrastructure is now starting to, uh, to come together in Fort landing. It's uh, uh, with more cables coming as we speak. We think it's a, we think it's important to to just recognize we have two two industrially zoned parts of the city, corporate landing and, and this parcel here. And so it's really all we got, which is why we need to mitigate the wetland. Any, okay. any other questions for Taylor? So is he buying 14 acres or six acres? 14 and a half acres. Is, is the original request was for six. It's, it's 14 and a half to accommodate the 135,000 square feet and parking. And the purchase price stays the same. The purchase price is the same. It's still one million. million. Which, and that's right, it's, it's, he's buying it for the appraised value. If no further questions, the chair will entertain a motion to request approval of modification of the terms of sale to Why Not Pizza. Looks like we have a uh, motion for Mr. Standing. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Uh, next, we've got our Economic Development Investment Program, EDIP program items. I'll, I'll move through this quickly. <coughs> um, again, the, uh, always excited. Again, always excited when local companies are growing. Here's a quick um, uh, history on Valkyrie Enterprises. And now I'll uh, jump forward to the disclosures to give you all a moment to read those. Um, basically, this is a company that provides uh, technical services and support engineering um, in the defense industry. Currently located on, corp uh, uh, on Corporation Lane, uh, and are uh, have a planned expansion to Guardian Lane. Um, they uh, they're looking at leasing 66,000 square feet. Um, they had a hundred thousand dollar EIP in 2015 that they satisfied two years ago. Um, they currently have 202 employees in Virginia Beach. And this expansion contemplates the creation of an additional 100 FTEs. So we're, 
uh, over the uh, 100 FTEs over the next 36 months. Um, in uh, project management, engineering, basically in the uh, uh, high wage, technically based um, fields that you, you all have asked us to focus on. So we're very excited about this creation of jobs in our community. Important to note, we're, we'd, um, these are high paying jobs as well with an average salary across the 100 FTEs of $86,000 per year net of, uh, of sort of uh, any employee benefits, true salaries. Um, there is some capital investment, $675,000, but again, so a $675,000 capital investment under the new under the new EDIP principles that you all adapt, um, adopted last year would not would not justify a large investment, but the creation of a hundred high paying jobs do, and so uh, and so we are we are requesting um, an EDIP Part A uh, for one hundred twenty five thousand dollars based on the creation of a hundred FTEs at uh, an average of 75,000 per job. Why 75,000? That's our, we don't have an 85 to 100 range, 75 is our highest range, so we're, um, we'll ask them to do that. I mean, important to know, mean wages in the Commonwealth of Virginia are just left less than $42,000, so average wages of 72,000 is a good win for us. Um, and uh, and this is, their corporate headquarters is here in Virginia Beach, and they're part of another one of the pillars of our local economy. That <coughs> we would, um, with that, we would be happy to take your questions, but would ask for your support. And there, are, I, I think I saw in one of your slides, their 2015 EIP grant has been satisfied. Fully satisfied. And closed out, and this is be brand new. And so, yeah, this this is a great local company that is continuing to grow and expand in our and, uh, and uh, choosing to make Virginia Beach their home. So we're uh, we're very excited about this one. Any questions for Taylor? Yeah, Taylor, bring us 10 more like these. Yeah, <laughs> we're on it. <laughs> Please, right? I think we're going to need them. That's right. Did you have a question? Any other questions? All right, the chair will entertain a motion to uh, approve a resolution authorizing an EDIP award, 125000 under Part A for Valkyrie Enterprises. Move. Second. All right, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Do you have another one of these for us, Taylor? So I got a, I got a EDIP program, and I actually do have another one of these for you, which is, which is uh, so today we're doing, it, we're doing it two ways. We're, we're bringing you a bunch of jobs in one, and we're going to bring you a ton of cash in the other. And so that's... You, that makes for a good meeting, right? <laughs> Bring them and save them. Um, Maybe you can double our pay for the uh, <laughs> service. Let's see what you do. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and Madam Chair, if you want, um, I'm happy to go ahead and do the other EDIP request, or we can do EDIP party. It's whatever you prefer. Why don't, why don't we go ahead and do, I, I know you're all teed up, but why don't, you, why don't we go ahead and do the EDIP request under the current uh, program and then we can spend a little bit of time on the new Part E program. Absolutely. And if I can, while well, I'm... Um, there you go. That was quick. While this one's coming up, I do want to recognize uh, Ray White and his team who worked both Valkyrie and, uh, and this <coughs> project. Uh, Ray and Charlie have uh, uh, done a great job pulling these together. Um, quickly though, so uh, let me... So this is an award that you all, you all have already made. And we're asking for a modification. I'll talk about that in just a minute. But here is, um, I'll let you all read their disclosures and then we'll dive in. So I won't read all this to you, but you all will remember um, Assured Communication Advisors uh, International was looking at, basically was, was looking at property before we landing. We had, a, we had an agreed upon sales agreement with them. Um, that, uh, and and in the EDIP that we're talking about extending was part of that, um, was, was part of that sales agreement. 
uh, they terminated that real estate acquisition, gosh, what was it, a year ago, six months ago, something like that. Um, when they terminated the, uh, uh, the real estate, op basically their real estate option, they, uh, uh, because your EDIP was tied to it, it potentially terminated as well. However, um, without, as you can see, this is a big company, uh, clients all over the world, a ton of experience. Um, you, uh, basically, uh, looking, believes, I will tell you, so I want to say for Joel Lorgren, who's the CEO of this company, he believes in Virginia Beach and, and has actually been, as you all know, we've had some less than, uh, I would tell you, less than advantageous conversation coming out of some of our partners in the region talking about um, <coughs> basically that, that, uh, that data infrastructure would not grow up here because of, uh, uh, because of hurricane impact and flooding, things of that nature. And Joel, was actually, Joel was actually a critical piece of, uh, of helping us combat that narrative and put it to bed so that we now have opportunity going forward. So we're talking about a CEO here that believes in our economy, that <laughs> believes in our city, and has now brought us this project. Um, looking at looking at a piece of property on the uh, on the Taylor Farm off of uh, uh, at basically Dam Neck and uh, and Harper's. We'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, it's a fairly large parcel, and this is uh, his land purchase. Uh, originally, in corporate corporate landing was ten acres at two hundred thousand, about two million, with a promise of one hundred and thirty thousand square feet. Uh, only 30 FTEs. As we know, data centers bring a ton of capital investment. They just don't create a lot of jobs. So we've now moved Taylor Farms, intersection of Dam Deck and Harpers. We've, the size of the project has increased to just over 22 acres. Uh, you've, got a, you've got a deal of 100,000 an acre total. So uh, first building here at 130,000 square feet, which again, a nice addition. Still the 30 FTEs. Um, what's great, anticipated completion in the first quarter of 22. So not that far away. This is the parcel that we're looking at. This is a site rendering. Uh, this is a sort of a, a look from the top. Uh, Looks like a Greyhound bus station. It does, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> Taylor, why are they going to private property as opposed to corporate landing? Why the, because they needed more space or? I'm, I don't know the answer to that. I, I would assume that it's because they need, they need additional space for further expansions. And I mean, it's just important for us to know, I mean, it's half the price. <laughs> That's a, you know, in the, uh, um, I, I really do think it's that simple. It's, it's 100,000 an acre versus a, a minimum of 200. I mean, I think it's, now, um, the other important to know about this property, at that corner of Dam Neck and Harpers, you very quickly get into the most restrictive Navy easements, which, which has a real impact on value. I'm not, I'm not for a minute suggesting that, we, that we're pricing our real estate um, too high in corporate landing. Um, the thing for this, though, is, and it's one of our new principles in the office, if, it, if it's something that we can cite in a Navy easement, um, it goes there as a first priority because we want to preserve our unencumbered real estate for uses that are a little more challenging. So it's important to note data centers, because of the low FTE count, are one of the few users that we can cite in areas where there's where there's heavy Navy impact. So uh, um, I've not I've not overlaid this project specifically, but but I know when you when you come north off of Dam Neck, you get into you get into those those easements pretty quickly. And is the property already zoned, or is it still ag? Uh, this one, I believe, we have done some rezoning in that area for uh, uh, for next bend. I do not know. I should know that. I apologize. I do not know specifically if zoning is required for this project. And the reason we didn't we didn't go that far with this one is because he's asking. Uh, he's not asking for an extension of the deadline. He's just asking for the time he had remaining on his initial EDIP clock. He's asked for another. We're, extend, we're extending it to June of 22. June of 22, but still, I mean, as we're here, in, as we're here in, in May of 20, yeah. he can finish it in two years. I mean, so long as so long as he he finishes it within his clock, I mean, basically, we, we would not grant an extension for for a zoning issue. We we're putting in. You got two years to get it done. Okay. That's the request, at least. Mm -hmm. So he's just asking for a little more time at this. Point. That's right. He's asking you to to to. Uh, 
basically reauthorize the deal that terminated and then give him to June of 22 to finish it. And that's, that's And the reason, uh, important to know, uh, <clears throat> obviously, landing of uh, subsea cables are an important part of what he's doing. Uh, and so uh, he doesn't, we do anticipate that there will be cables that land at this. This is the reason that we support this one. Um, 46.8 million in construction, just over, just less than three million for real estate, a um, million dollars worth of personal property that'll be in there, and one and a half million versus uh, worth of computer property. Now you all know this is a data center, so it'll, it, we anticipate this is between him and the commissioner, of course, but we anticipate that this qualifies for the rapid depreciation schedules that were approved for, uh, you know, for data centers for the computer equipment. So we separate that in the capital investment because it because it. Uh, because again, it's almost fully depreciates, I think, in two years. And so, but total investment in our community is, uh, was uh, 52 and a half, or 52 million. Uh, here's the award that was approved, the half million, um, you know, basically uh, $1 for the 25 or more. Here's the new program. Uh, construction of 20, just less than 25 million. <laughs> Um, phase two construction of 33 million, uh, real estate of 2.1 million, same personal property of a million, um, and then computer equipment of one and a half million. So we're now looking at a proposed uh, total investment in our community that's less than 62 million um, by June of 22. So, so we like this project for that for that reason. So build phase one and two by then. That is what that's what we believe. But but what I'll tell you is if we can just he would qualify with just just phase one, but yeah, I mean our goal is to get one and two through. And how does he tie into the undersea cables? Does he have to go through our approved um, so he will not be in corporate landing now, so so no, he would not necessarily be mandated to use our uh, our conduit management system. And as I understand his plan, I this is where I don't want to get ahead of his, uh, his development plan, but I think there may be a, a cable landing at his location. So, uh, um, but I don't want, but I don't want to definitively say that without him being here to. So he's looking potentially at a separate undersea cable coming to the Taylor Farms location. <clears throat> And they'd have to get the easements and everything they would need. Well, right, they would have to. I mean, so wh whatever they're bringing to the site, they'll have to negotiate with our right-of-way folks, separate from us. But, uh, but like I say, we see it. We see a sixty-two million dollar investment. Um, we think this is a great addition to the tax base, and we ask for your support. Just to off question the, the, the different cables that are coming from that area. Are they? Do they not plan on work? No use to working together. Um, so, or is that impossible because of the so so? Or? Um, so no, I think that there is uh, there is quite a bit of collaboration going on within the park, especially now that we have um, our Meet Me Room up and running at, at Global Links, and they're pulling customers in. So we see that there are users for our conduit management system. Um, the cables that land at Telsius run to the run to the Meet Me Room at Global Link. So yeah, that's happening. But um, but also, I don't I don't I don't want to run from the fact that these that these data many of these data center providers are competitors. Sure. So. I think the real concern that we had you were talking about the chatter about hurricanes. The concern that we had is I think it's Henrico County. There's a group that's making a push to get basically service from our undersea cables to Henrico County, completely bypassing Hampton Road. So they want to set up their own group of so, data centers. That's right. So this is something that we did not know then um, because we never landed a cable here before. So this is not a criticism, either. we just didn't know. Um, we landed these cables and basically it's like having, it's like having an interstate highway run right through our town, but we didn't have an off ramp. Right. The, uh, the Carrier Neutral Hotel and the Meet Me Room created the off-ramp. Um, Henrico, and good on them, got a jump on us because these cables can only, you can only run this signal so long before you have to ha 
at a regeneration point. Richmond was the natural regeneration point, and so they, it was a great way to offload signal, and they did. And so, I mean, that's just, that's business and competition. We, and so we're, we're not, you know, uh, the thing that was challenging for us was there was a narrative as we were bringing our carrier neutral hotel and meet me room online that the infrastructure couldn't be <coughs> That was the narrative we had to uh, combat. And we're seeing with projects like this that we're right. We can absolutely deliver this function here. And what this is, it's digital infrastructure. It's, it basically is, it's, it's, like, it's like water and sewer and roadways. Having this here gives us the ability to be more to be a more attractive location for other technology users that need to be close to that signal. So this is so this is a big next step for us. So they offer infrastructure to support the cable? Yes, sir. Any other questions for Taylor? Taylor, is this the company? I, I can just hear he. I don't know which what you're talking about. You got the wrong button. Is this Hey, Dot, we can't hear you anymore. So, so this is, but I think I know, the, this is Joel Orgren at ACA International. Um, uh, Joel, we were dealing with Joel and, uh, you know, two to three years ago. And uh, um, it, it, is a, it is a project that the authority has seen before. This and is just so, a larger one. So for ACA, by going to, going outside of corporate landing, they don't have to deal with global links now. I think that's right. I think that's right. Dot, are you still there? It's calling. Um, uh, I'll move it. All right, so we've got a motion to approve the modification of the EDIP uh, award to Assured Communications Advisors. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Th thank you for that. That was, that was an integral step in, uh, in him. Basically, his, uh, his investors were, were looking for our support of his project. And so, this, so thank you. This, this one actually makes a big difference. I think we have a technology issue. Hold on for just a second. Sure. Do we have to get Dot and NECA back on, or? Is there Dot? Is ne yeah, NECA, are you still there? You know what you could do? Call one on that, and then call the other on the other thing. And that way you just have them on two separate phones. We still have one up here. So let's call Dot on that other thing that I showed you earlier. So we just approved a global landing station, but can't connect two phones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the irony. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm just glad I learned how to host a meeting on Zoom. <laughs> Hello. Sorry to miss your Is NECA still there? You're leaving down a voicemail now. Now like it. This next one's important, so we'll try to get both of them back should on the line. Try to, should I hang up and try again? I would. Don't we have a quorum here? Yes. We, we do it in the room that by phone people don't count for quorum. Or they can't vote. So, if, if you want, well, I can quickly move on to, uh, we have two fairly easy items for, uh, they're the same item for Virginia, uh, for Virginia Beach National and uh, facilities. Live Nation. Thank you. Thank you. Shall, shall I do that one? Yeah, let's go ahead and jump to those. <laughs> these, these are fairly straightforward. Um, basically, it's uh, COVID-19 has had uh, a real impact on operations citywide. Um, uh, Live Nation has not been able to host an event, uh, and uh, where Virginia Beach National, the uh, the actual golf course, uh, is quite healthy as, as it relates to the number of rounds that they're seeing. Their food service provider has not been able to to whom they who pays us rent has not been able to basically operate. So they've been in a uh, message press um, three because if you need something else press because of uh, uh, like so many restaurants they. 
they were uh, or food service providers, they've been impacted by the uh, uh, executive order. So I think they're selling cold food, but they're not really able to provide service. And so they're just, uh, Virginia Beach National is asking us to, to basically allow them to forgive the rent of their food service provider during this crisis so that they can just maintain what has been a good partner for them. And, uh, um, and Live Nation is asking for, uh, for uh, similar relief for the same reason. And uh, we think this is reasonable. These are these are great partners for ours. We want these are great partners of ours. We want them to be successful. And so uh, we would ask that you uh, that you approve their requested relief just to the end of this uh, this crisis. So for Virginia Beach Golf, we're getting some component of rent. They're just asking for us to abate the rent for the for the food service. Food service. Okay, that's right. So what percentage is that of the overall rent? It is. It's minimal. It's. Uh, I'd have to pull up the, pull up the letter to show you. But I mean, it's. It's a. That's right. It's. 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 Very small. Fine till COVID to find the to find the termination. In such time that the manager, uh, the, the local emergency is lifted. That's right. And, and operations. Why don't we pull Live Nation? That's not. That's not. Well, Live Nation. Well, Live yeah. Nation. Let's deal with the golf course yeah. first. I think. I think. Yeah, so, so for the golf course, we're just asking for relief till we can, till basically they can reopen. So, so when when the emergency is lifted, and they can they can reopen and start selling food again, then we would then we would think that their their need would be expired at that. Point. And again, it's just rent abatement for the food piece of it, food not service not. provider. That is correct. All right. it, it, I hate to be particular, but open inside, outside, fifty percent, one hundred percent. What what is the? <laughs> so, since it's a golf course, I think we get. I think if we get. We get to fifty percent. I mean, they're at a point where they can. I mean, they should be to operate it. I mean, they're, but, but phase two could change though. We don't. That's my. <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, phase, and when is phase two? I don't know. I mean, so for me, I think fifty percent indoor because I don't think they're lined up out the door there. So fifty percent indoor is probably, and I think there's a lot of business out there as soon as they can open. Right. But they're going to be able to open Friday outdoors. That's right, and so, and so this is uh, we basically. I think we're forgiving the last two months of rent, and then until they can get to fifty percent, is what the request would be. What about putting a time constraint on this, like approve it now through the end of uh, May or the end of June, and to be reviewed again? Or? End of June gets to the end of the fiscal year. That works for me. That, that, I'd say end of June. Oh, okay. I wake yeah, right. okay. Trust me, they're hurting. Why, why wouldn't they just qualify under this? Uh, the, so, the CDIP then. So they would, they would qualify, and uh, and that's and that's something we could pursue. Um, uh, they got the money there. Why would we have to pay him? Yeah, I, th I don't think they can double do. No, they, yeah, can't, yeah. they can't have both. They can't have both. I think it's easier if somebody is paying rent to the authority. I think it's easier for us to abate rent in those situations. They can't then qualify for Part E. But it's easy. It's easier for us to do the rent abatement. That's I think. fair. Yeah. So I'll move that we, we abate the rent through uh, the end of the fiscal year, July, June 30th, to be reviewed after that. But not to be able to qualify for a PDIP yeah. grant. The Part E. All right, so we've got a motion, and Mike, was that a second? And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries. So then the next one we have to deal with is... Um, Live Nation. That is, a, that is a more serious issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they're not in a position where they can have an event for a while. But they are a great partner for us. They have done an amazing job managing our asset. Um, it is, they have, uh, their, uh, their rent and incentive checks have, have, have been coming steady. And I mean, and again, they've been a willing participate, participant in all of the, uh, the renovations and expansion that we've done there. And, uh, and it's in a great it's a great event venue. And we just funded some additional. We did. That's right. We did. Um, and so, uh, again, Alex, do we know how long they need relief? Yeah, for th just for three months. Just for three months. June. Did Live Nation qualify for any of the PVP? Uh, locally, I don't believe they did. Not, not at all. To my knowledge, not all for them because their company is so big they right. can't. Okay. But it's important if they took each one like a lot of those big companies do. It's important that they ask for this. Um, 
they asked for this relief a few weeks ago before we knew they were going to. Mr. Standing's point is right on. I, I don't know that three months has them at a place where they're they're hosting events again. Uh, certainly, if certainly if we know that um, a two hundred person event doesn't help them, <laughs> right? And so, uh, um, so I do think um, I don't know if the, if this is possible. We fully support the request for the three months, but we would entertain the ability if you all were willing to give it to us to either come back with a subsequent request or even at the staff level to uh, to amend that request with your approval. We'd prefer to bring it back to you, yeah. but uh, but I just I just want to be want to be as transparent as possible. We may need more than three months here. Tough, yeah. That's understood. I, I would uh, I would suggest that well, no question. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, but I would suggest that they come back with a proposal. Um, Great idea. And they have a couple options based on what their foreseeable future is with it, because it, it, the fact of the matter is, it ain't going to be for a while. Got it. What, what do they pay monthly in rent? It's ten thousand, and they pay it throughout the year, even though yep. even when they're not open, right? Yeah, right. So. Right. From their budget perspective, even though they pay it monthly, they're, I mean, this is supposed to be their busy season. This is when they make all their revenue. This is when they make it, that's right. When does their season end? Does it end October? G yeah, G generally it's, yeah. I mean, I think they have a few October shows, but but I think the, the big ones are, are generally by Labor Day. May through August. But they could, they could go longer. It's just a question of anybody touring outside and then right. you get the weather. Right. And I've, have they had all of their acts canceled, or is it just? I, we believe so. I do. This is where I got to say I do not know the status of, of any contracts that they have that go beyond the end of the of this executive order, or the basically lifting the either the local or uh, or state emergency. But certainly, everything up to that point has been canceled. I'll move the three month requested abatement. Question before we step on that real quick. Um, one, just an observation or, or comment that um, the relief coming from the federal government continues to evolve. Um, we, we, we see new rules coming out continuously. continually. Uh, also, we expect that there's going to be additional <coughs> steps, whether those steps are as some would like to be this week and others suggesting at the end of June, there are going to be additional steps. And I would like to emphasize that they should continue to pursue any other relief that would provide rent relief uh, and not simply fall back on the fact that this has been abated, therefore they have no obligation to pursue uh, federal relief of some sort. So I'd like to make sure that we emphasize that in some way. Exhaust all efforts. Uh, whatever that language be, um, I think we need to do that. Uh, the second question is, um, as we do go through, and I don't know what this looks like, very few people do, but whatever this phased opening of different opportunities looks like, are there while, while co the concert series may be sidelined, are there other opportunities for use of that facility over the course of the summer? I'd hate for it to sit completely empty, mm -hmm. unused, e even if it's outdoor church service on Sunday. Um, some other type of use of that facility that would meet the criteria, would the, the, the city or the development authority have the ability to use it for that purpose, or is it exclusive uh, to 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 uh, Live Nation. It's the building has the ability to use the building for. I think, it, I think it's limited to municipal purposes, a certain number of times per year. And then we just have to pay for any employees mm -hmm. that Live Nation provides. To, to your point, I, th I think they need to come. It would be a good idea for them to come to us. Come with a plan. Provide options, plans, yeah. alternative revenue sources, you know, potential. Government relief, what, however they, whatever we can generate revenue. We, we, they owe us an annual report anyway. We just haven't been able to bring them in because uh, because of the crisis. So we can we can work towards that. It's a big facility where you can socially distance with a cover and the opportunity to gather people in a way that you may not be able to Except elsewhere. Except you can't have gatherings of more than fifty in phase two. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what so we're starting one. Your outdoor, but they is are outdoor. Is it a complete abatement or is it no, tacked on to the back end? Half of it goes to fifty people. Yeah, is it complete abatement or is it tied on the back end? I don't know the answer. Completely? Well, 
30 grand. My nation will be everybody, every Everybody's adding to the end. Yeah. But in some cases, it doesn't really mean a whole lot because if they're staying anyways or you're renegotiating a contract, it's irrelevant. Cutting into it's, next year. It, it just sounds good, you know. Yeah, those are my two comments. That's all I have. Yeah, I, just, I don't think they're going to have it. I mean, I, I think we're all lucky if they can get running in July, but probably August. And you know, the question is, who's going to be touring and are people going to be comfortable enough to go to events? So. Right now, concerts are even canceling into next year. I can yeah. just tell you that, what's going on. So. It's a pretty serious situation. All right. So I th the motion was for run abatement for the three months and then for them to come back to us with a plan that would include whether or not they can get other forms of, uh, of funding from the federal government. Second. All right, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Do we have our phone? Or Dot and NECA on the phone? I couldn't get NECA to send the voicemail. Okay. I'm thinking Dot, so. Dot, are you there? It doesn't sound like there's anybody. I do what I get cut off. Yeah. Okay, wait, we heard you. I said every time I say something, I get cut off. The phone goes dead. So is it dead now? No, yeah, we can hear you. You're hitting the wrong buttons. You were saying it was very. Neck, are you still there? No, she's not. I think we lost. Whatever. We can't hear you all very well, but I, I get a few words. Try to be louder. All right, we're moving on to the request uh, for approval of the uh, Small Business Emergency Assistance, which is the new Part E right. program under our EDIP and so, program. Um, and so what I'll show you here is this, is this is our new policy document that's been approved by City Council. Um, and I'll run through a couple of points here, but just to give you all in advance what we're asking for here. City Council has uh, created Part E and given us approval to use one and a half million of our uh, EDIP funds that are that are available um, for small business assistance to assist with the local emergency. Um, we have their policy statement. We're now coming to you and asking um, for procedural guidance on how you would like us to administer this portion of the program. So wait, to be technically correct, they've allowed us to use $1.5 million of our budget for this new program, which they've given us guidelines for. We still need to, Alex, I'm looking at you, we still need to approve because this is our policy. That's right. We need right. to approve the policy. <laughs> but as far as the qualifications, we're limited to what, what, They've indicated the businesses how they would need to qualify for this. That's right. They've given us a box. We can, as long as we're within that box, we'll, we can op, we can operate wherever you, we can go wherever you send us. But, the, but basically, they've drawn the they've sort of drawn the meets and bounds of where we will we will operate. Um, and so, just to run through that, uh, a qualifying business uh, has fewer than two two hundred and fifty <laughs> employees has operated in the city for at least one year or 12 months, um, continues to operate during the local emergency or was ordered closed by one of the executive orders. We thought that was an important distinction to make. There are plenty of businesses that, that would have operated but could not. Um, uh, that they have been affected by the, uh, by the pandemic and it has caused disruption to their, to their revenues uh, of the business so that the business is unable to continue generating sufficient revenue to make rents, uh, utility payments, or to meet its other obligations without reducing its number of employees. That's important. Uh, the, uh, the, the business is operated in a lease space and the landlord's not related to the entity, um, uh, is not a related entity to the owner or owners of the business, and the business agrees that it will forestall any reduction in its workforce during the grant period as defined in Section 3. What's the grant period? It's, uh, as we get to section three, you'll see that that this that the uh, this is the these grants are for the lesser of actual losses or ten thousand um, dollars. When we looked at the rent piece, we were talking about we had to hem that in, so we said two months rent. So the grant period, two months. <laughs> that's that's the definition there that we that we've worked through. 
there's the one and a half million that we mentioned, and there's section three. Um, there's an app. We have been accepting applications here, and uh, and I'll show you that application in just a moment. Um, from there, we get into to just to additional uh, criteria uh, and the selection process. But what I want to talk about is. Um, what council has basically said to us through their policy, their policy approval is um, prior to the approval of a grant, the authority shall make the finding that the application, the applicant qualifies, the animating purpose of the proposed provision of EDIP funds for the grant is the public purpose of promoting economic development and retaining business, that the expenditure of such funds will only incidentally inure to uh, private interests. Um, the proposed provision of funds for the grants and the furtherance of the purposes for which our authority was created. Uh, that without the grant, it's unlikely the applicant would be able to continue its operation in the city at its current level. And then finally, that the continued operation of the business will be beneficial to the recovery of the local economy. So basically, this is this is fairly straightforward stuff. But as we're talking about new public policy, I thought it was great. I thought it was important that that the public here that uh, everything we are doing here is to protect our existing business community to, con to continue with your long-standing precedent of investing in our local business community to ensure that our community continues to grow. And so all of that is contained here. I'll jump over to the application quickly just so that you all can see what we've been, what we've been looking for. Um, this application comes straight from the policy, and I want to jump down to to this section here before we start talking about evaluation. This is, um, these are the pieces that we require to, to have what we call a complete application. One is you got to fill out the form. Two, we want each business to give us a statement describing how the local impact, the local emergency has impacted them. We think that's important to document all of the ways on the, on the back end of this, it's going to be important to know how people have been affected specifically because there's no way, everybody's business is a little different. There's no way that we can guess on all of it. And so we're seeing this fairly broad. Due to the local business, business uh, they have to confirm to us that due to the local emergency, they can't gener generate sufficient revenue to, uh, to cover whatever obligation they are asking for relief on. Um, that the receipt of the grant will allow the business to continue uh, operation and forestall any reduction in employees. We think that's important. You can't come to us, for, get a $10,000 grant, and then lay off your employees. We thought that was an important provision to, uh, to leave it, to have in the, uh, uh, in the uh, process. Um, the, uh, the, the, the landlord has agreed to waive all late fees. We think this is important too. So here's the thing, what we can't have is, we can't get, if somebody's already six months behind on their rent, we can't give you two months rent and then you're just four months behind. We, got, we think it's important that we know that, uh, that the business is close, is close enough to current on their obligations that the landlord is waiving fees. We feel that's an important threshold to meet in knowing that this business can continue to operate in our community after the fact. Um, that there's a valid lease in place and, that the, and, and here's something else, that the applicant um, shall provide a copy of the current lease or other written and binding obligation for which the business seeks assistance. We think that's important to know as well. And that's also important for us from a qualification standpoint because the lease allows us to, to that is a, the best verification point that we can come up, come up with to know what somebody's paying for rent. So, you know, so what we don't want is a situation where somebody comes in and says, well, my rent's $5,000 a month, gets 10 grand where the rent's really $3,500 a month. So the lease is an important piece for some some documentation that provides us a quantifiable number for rent to know that we're that we're not funding at a higher amount than we should. Um, something else that we have done uh, uh, through through conversations with the officers of the authority, um, we have uh, uh, we have taken additional steps. Um, we're working with the commissioner of the revenues uh, office. They've been a great partner for us in this space. We have received just less than three, as of the close of business yesterday, we've received just less than 370 applications for this program. Um, so, so, we, so there is a strong need for, uh, uh, now we know that not all of those are complete applications. We know that not all of those will qualify, but it's important that there are 370 business owners in our community that are asking for this assistance. 
We're working with the Commissioner of Revenue now. We've sent them a complete list of everyone that we've received, and they are going through that list to, uh, to confirm that there are business licenses in place for every one of those. That also gives us a great validation point. And, you know, we're, we're not going to go business by business. It also, it also gives us the ability to do a better job of quantifying actual, actual losses. So, uh, um, so we think that's an important piece as well. Yes, sir. I apologize. I have a 10 o'clock Zoom on new life um, yeah. that I have to do. Um, but I, I do have a quick question. First, I want to thank you all in your department for recognizing the need for this because obviously we could bring in all the business we, <laughs> and we can try to do, but if we don't save and salvage what we have, I think this is one of the most serious things that we need to, to address um, not just in this meeting, but maybe subsequent before the end of the before the next month meeting, um, and um, because just to try to quantify the need is is going to be significant, and after a while the city council may get sick of dribbling out a million here and a million there. It's going to take a significant amount more money, I think. Um, the uh, it's a very complicated issue. Uh, we've seen two. People uh, apply today for the Live Nation and, and another, and they're just they're they're two of, of really thousands. And um, is there a process that you all have to that you have to try to kind of look at the scope of the need or are these applications your indicator? So maybe as you go through the applications, you can you all will see it more. What I'm afraid of, uh, um, and I'm very certain that these issues are going to get worse and worse and worse in the next six months. And I can speak for the hospitality industry on how severe it is. And it's, it's no secret what it is, um, but we cannot lose these small businesses. And one other comment um, in this, and I know I spoke to you, but I didn't see anywhere for, for people who own their property. Is there, as it says, just for tenants? Just can't, just can't get rent assistance. You can't, but they can get assistance, but not rent assistance. For employees, yes, sir. Okay. And other obligations. And other obligations, that right. But okay. here's right. the thing, if you, if, you, if you own the business, basically, so uh, what this does not allow us to do is provide, provide rent assistance to owners of buildings or, as an extension, mortgage support. But there are other expenses that could be paid. Right. Okay. But, but again, I would follow up. Thank you very, very much. And I, I, it's... I think we need to get on this before the next month because it has to do with city budgeting. Sure. It has to do with everything. So, so thank you for that. And, and, and to your point, this is really the one opportunity that, our, that this authority will likely have to, uh, to make significant contributions to uh, um, particularly general retail uses. As you all know, uh, our authority is built around industrial uses, manufacturing, commercial uses, office users. We're not really, um, our, procedurally, we're not built to invest in, uh, in retail. But to your point, it is very much needed right now, and this is an opportunity for us to support that portion of our economy, and we think it's very important. Um, there, here is our request, and I, before I walk through this, we, um, it is our, as you all know, we have a meeting on the 19th. It's our regular meeting. Um, I have eight members of my staff that are standing by that coming out of this meeting today, whatever procedures are adopted, we're going to go from basically start from can to can't every day um, with a goal to have all of our completed applications reviewed by the close of business Friday so that we can present them to you on Tuesday. We have nothing like a deadline, right? We have, we have, never, we have never moved. I love deadlines. I do too. Yeah. Oh, hands on. <laughs> yeah. So, so here's the thing: we have never. Um, I will admit, uh, and and thank you to those of you who helped us with the application. You know, I stood in front of council two weeks ago and said we're going to get this application on the street by the close of business on Friday. Was it perfect? No, but it was out. Um, and so, I'm, the next deadline for my team is we're going to work until we're done on Friday. And then the idea is we want to come back to you on Tuesday with a with a basically a docket of grants to approve that we have validated and the goal is to start cutting checks immediately because to your point the need out there is real and it is dire and people are going out of business real time right now so we i got to get this money out the door 
So my request is one, a pretty simple evaluation. Um, and we built a draft of one here and we would, we'll tell whatever thoughts you can give us, we appreciate. There's one that I've already gotten and I'll show you. This is, this is the original draft that I built around the comments from council. It is not perfect and I know it's not perfect. And, and there's probably ways to simplify this. But um, these are the statements at the top. These pass fail criteria, this is what constitutes a complete application. Can you make your screen a little larger, please? Zoom that. You got that? Thank you. So, and that's why we're calling this pre-screening. And it's just the things I talked about. Have we got a statement of impact? Have you verified that the loss is attributable to the emergency? You got a valid lease for us? Landlord agreement to waive your fees? I mean, all of those things. These are just straight pass-fail criteria. That's it. And that's what, that was what's specified in council's policy. Here, um, and, and if you get an X in all these boxes, you have passed, you have a complete application. Um, operation for more than 12 months, we'll have that in the lease, um, or the business license, which is being validated now. Number of employees, this, this is not a scored bucket. We just think it's gonna be really important on the back end of this to be able to provide information to you all on what we saw in the pool. So, how many businesses with less than 50 employees got benefit versus how many businesses with 150 and 250 got benefit? So, so this is just for our internal tracking. Um, excuse me, excuse me a second. Is there any action we need to take on this? Because yeah. I have to leave at 10, too. Yep. A vote on this or what? what? Yeah, we need to vote on this. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. If, what do you want us to vote on? So the one thing that I would tell you is um, we can run with this. Um, there's been some pushback on scoring taxes as high as we have. Um, I'm happy to delete that. If, if that satisfies the authority, I can delete that piece. We've got the Commissioner of Revenue piece coming through. If you'll approve that, I can go. All right, qu question. You, I didn't see on your pass-fail disclosure. We can't approve any... Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, disclosure is obviously a hard requirement before it comes to this body, so we'll have completed disclosures on everybody. That, so, that, that's generally the idea. Yeah, policy. just so everybody knows, the um, criteria from council required that the um, entity the landlord entity not be a related entity, so we're using the, the uh, definition from the disclosure, so parent, subsidiary, affiliate, all of that, so we know what the relationship is there. We've kind of looked at this. We've asked to make sure that we know the location of the business, so all the money is not going to one part of the city versus the other part of the city. Um, the landlord has to be willing, and, and we need to know that the business is a viable business. So if they're already six months behind in their rent, that's, that's not a safe bet. They were on life support at a time when the economy was doing well. So we're trying to, I mean, we've got way more requests than we have funding, even if we get an extra million dollars. So we're really trying to make sure that the money's going where it needs to go. The other piece of this is if they already get, got PPE dollars or CARES Act, or if they got funding from some place else, they become a lower priority for us because we want to make sure we're getting the money to the businesses that have no other way to get relief and that this is really going to be impactful for them. So those are kind of the, the four policy pieces that the Bill and Dot and I were looking at, making sure there's plenty of businesses in the city that can't get money from any other source and, and we're their lifeline. So we need to... One of the things we've thought about... We need to approve. Just use of, of this procedural draft that's in front of you. One thing I would say on this, I can't, I can't do taxes. Out, I might just either, either pull that out. out or just make all of these take money from the city to be done with it. Pay taxes back to the city. Yeah. So how does a person prove that they can't stay in business without this money? I don't. I mean, they're going to have to give us a written statement and sign the bottom of it. I mean, there's a point at which penalties are what? Well, well, you know, well, certi I mean, they're, they're certifying that they're not making this up, and if we find out that they lied, then that's a serious thing. Yeah, and I just asked a couple of things I heard, that I heard. Um, number one, and, and I, I know it's hard to be a perfect scenario, it's very difficult we see it in the federal government, but number one, I heard um, if they haven't gotten PPP, why didn't they? Why didn't they? Get out there and do it like everyone else and lots of reasons yeah and I'm sure there are so those reasons need to be you know there's a blank on that so when we worked on the application we uh, asked for information well, for all uses whether or not they qualified whether or not they put yeah, it in, whether I think or not that's they fair anything. and then and then I heard it depends what area I don't know how you qualify that because 
one person could have lesser need, but you have an area that has more people. I, I don't. I, I wouldn't want to see that way too much because needs a need. To, doesn't matter where you are. Well, I say here, you know, you could go up to 250 employees. Okay, you got 250 employees, and you get 10,000 bucks. Gonna put you out of business. You got a problem. <laughs> I mean, I'm just telling you. Okay? I've been in business for 45 years, and I'm looking at all of this criteria, right? Yeah. Uh, but you got to start somewhere. <laughs> One quick thing to mention because I didn't talk about it. We have provide um, provided points based on what economic data from the Commonwealth is showing. Um, as it relates to industrial sectors that are most impacted. So we see that retail and hospitality most impacted, defense least impacted. We are giving more, more points to businesses with less than 25 employees in hospitality than we are in defense in this model. But so I don't wanna, I don't wanna hide that from anybody, but that's straight out of the economic data from the Commonwealth, so we think it's defensible. And Mike, you would ask that question, how do we know where the need is or who's really being impacted? And we do have some data that survey and uh, so, is there anyone, that, I, I mean, I'm kind of with Bill. I don't think we should be reimbursing people for taxes that they're going to turn around and pay the city. You know, I don't know. We have that as a four. Uh, because just so everybody knows, what staff is doing is they're taking this spreadsheet and these criteria and this guidance, and they're going to be able to sort of call these applications based on this and, and score them based on this spreadsheet. So. This is going to impact what gets to us. So I think we need to be clear on. And so what I did was I just changed. So the policy contemplates that we'll pay out for these things. So I just changed the score to the same for all uses that are, that are approved within the policy. All uses are equal. All, the, all uses are equal because we, it's, it's, I mean, that's what the policy was written to do. So. All the needs going to be different. All right. So do we have, I think, unless there are any other questions. The chair will entertain a motion that we approve. Now, the way this policy is now, everything comes ultimately before this body for approval, which is slightly different than what the version the council saw. Yep. So you're going to bring every application before the committee? We're going, to bring, we're going to bring you a docket of applications that our team has scored. We're going to show you the score that we put on them, and we're going to ask you to fund them based on that program. All right, good. That's why this, that's why this ranking is important, because this is, this is what we're going to use to call the herd. And then we're, we're coming back and asking for money in a week. And when we see that it's going to be the, the name of the applicant and some basis for the, your determination, right? That's right. Is there going to be a staff write-up on each? or If we can get it done. Okay. I mean, that, the, if we, that's, but yes. I, mean, had, I thought you had a scoring mechanism. We could look at the scores, right? Yes, sir. You'll have scores on every item. And then we'll need disclosures on every item. So yes, we know we'll have those for you. All right. I'll move adoption as modified. So we have a Second. motion. Second. Second. Taylor. Second. Taylor seconded. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That motion carries, and I will see, see you those Tuesday. of you who are leaving on Tuesday. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you. All right. So we're done. We okay. Start do so I? Let me, let me ask the folks to terminate outside because I do have one. Meeting, though, I do have one. Do I have to? Do you have to have anything going anything? closed? We have to, yeah, we can't do closed doors. Okay. okay. All right. So we have to keep it. We can have to get it. Yeah. So we're having our regular meeting on Tuesday. On Tuesday. Thank you. We plan. More than I talked about.